Javier, are you planning to invade my space again with your unwelcome presence? Huh? It feels like there's some kind of a repulsive and disgusting creature that's come crawling on me. Oh, well, if it's not my pathetic 40-year-old recluse of a sister, Scarlet. Are you still locking yourself into that place of yours with no ambition or passion for life? You happen to have a luxurious penthouse on the top floor of that magnificent building, but it's all squandered on you. The only reason I'm never stepping out of this room is because I don't ever want to face you or your wife. I know that both mom and dad will welcome you into their lives all the time, but I loathe having you guys around. Huh? Why is that? If I'm to leave my place at any moment, you and your wife sneak in here and tamper with things. And there are even times you both will come and snatch things of mine back to your guys' house. You and I are family, so it's perfectly normal for us to share some of your things. No, it's totally not fine at all. I've had to resort to the extreme measure of having to go to the bathroom in my room in order to avoid the possibility of ever having you guys barging in and stealing things from me without my consent. And when I'm hungry, I can only eat these emergency rations that I've saved up in advance so that I don't have to go out and face the world. Huh? What the heck? You're a crazy woman. Hearing you say things like that about our lifestyle really makes me want to come over to your place even more than before. What? Hey, tonight I'm going to be staying over there. Please and thank you. I want you to go away from here right now. This penthouse is not the place where you and your wife can just come over anytime and do whatever you please. And this rule applies not only to you two, but also to mom and dad as well. Do you understand? What? What the heck are you ranting about now? Why don't you take a good look at yourself in the mirror for me, and then try to repeat all that nonsense again? What are you saying? That doesn't even make any logical sense. Oh, it does make sense. You are already in your 40s now. Yet you still have the audacity to plan on living in mom and dad's penthouse for the rest of your life? You're nothing but a parasite who feeds off those two. What did you just say? I don't want to hear your meaningless questions anymore. Listen carefully, Scarlet. That penthouse is supposed to be inherited by someone like me, who is the older brother. Which means that I have the authority to decide who gets to live in there and who doesn't. Wait a minute. I really want to know what the frick is going on inside your head right now. This penthouse is not mom and dad's property, and it is sure as hell not going to be yours anytime soon. Do you hear me? I really want to know myself what's going on with your delusions. Like I've been telling you, you have absolutely no right to still be living there. Mom and dad are still residing in that place with you. Which means that the place belongs to them, am I right? Have you already forgotten everything I explained to you before? Oh, I remember the story you made up about how that place happens to be your fiancé's. But as of this moment, he's overseas and he can't do anything to stop us from coming here. So, you do remember what I was telling you about? Do you really expect me to believe that you have a fiancé who's overseas now? I've never even seen or met this fiancé of yours before. And why the hell would he choose to go overseas when he should be focusing on marrying you? This must mean he's not a real person, am I right? <laughs> I told you before that he was assigned to go overseas for his work, didn't I? You're insane. Do you want me to call him right now and have him talk to you? I can ask him right now, and I'm sure he'd be more than willing to do a video call with you so that you can see his face for yourself. Ah, yes. You're still going on about your imaginary boyfriend now. What are you talking about? Come on now. You're too old for that kind of crap, all right? It's pathetic for me to hear something like that from my little sister, to be honest. I guess you really are the type of person who won't ever change their ways unless they're confronted with a cold, hard truth. What are you talking about? Don't worry about it. It's nothing. Well, I hope you enjoy whatever time you have left for living as a shut-in here. <laughs> Samson, are you available to talk right now? 
I really need to speak to you about something. Hey, Scarlet, isn't it like 2 o'clock in the morning over there right now? You have to call me at this late hour of the night, huh? I don't want you to suffer from any lack of sleep just because there is such a huge difference in time zones between us. You need to take care of yourself. Yeah, I know. Normally, I would have called you at a more reasonable time when you were just waking up or something like that. But this time, I have something urgent that I need to discuss with you when you're not still groggy. It's something that has been bothering me for a while. Well, if it's that important, then maybe it was a smart idea to call me when I'm fully alert and awake. I want to hear what you have to say. Is it about your parents again? Are they still giving you trouble? Well, my parents are actually involved in this, to be honest. They've managed to drag my brother and his wife into this mess as well. They've all been staying in the penthouse with me, and they won't leave. Are you serious? That's crazy. So they assume that they can just move into a house that doesn't belong to them and live there indefinitely. I suppose that if they already have their belongings there, and there's no effective way of kicking them out without some solid justification, they think they have the right to stay. I think that's the case when it comes to me allowing my parents to stay here. At first, it was because they couldn't afford to pay the rent on their place anymore, because it had increased so much. And you told me yourself that it was okay for them to come and stay for a short period of time. So, I agreed to let them move in. But while they've been living here with me, my brother started to believe that this place has always been mom and dad's, and now he wants to live here too. Of course, it doesn't help that my parents refuse to move out. They've gotten too comfortable here. Kicking him out or telling him to never come back is probably a very difficult task for you to handle by yourself, right? I'm not referring to your parents right now, but just your brother and his wife. They're the ones who are causing you the most trouble, right? I've attempted that already, but my parents keep letting them in, forcing me to lock myself in my room while they're around. And what makes all of this worse is that when they've been coming over, they will take things. Even from our room. I've had to start storing all the more valuable things in here with me and make sure to keep the room door securely locked at all times with me in here. Sometimes they'll be in the house for an entire day and I'll have to resort to using the bathroom in here and eating some of our canned foods. Right now, my brother thinks I'm some kind of weirdo because I never leave my room anymore. He doesn't understand what I'm going through. That's... well, that's not good at all. That's terrible. And actually, if they're stealing things from the penthouse, you could report them to the police. You have the right to do that. They're breaking the law. Well, I've been wanting to do that, but I thought it would be better to wait for you to come back home, since it's not my penthouse. It's yours. And, as of right now, it's a one-against-four situation with me going against my whole family. Calling the police at a time like this would most likely make things worse for me. They would hate me even more. Hey, Scarlet, out of all the things that you have, how much of it is stuff that you could? Uh, you know, never leave it out and would like to keep for as long as possible. I'm asking you this for a reason. Huh? Let me think about that. That's a hard question. This isn't meant to be a trick question or anything like that. I just want to know how much you have that you would not want to lose under any circumstances. It's important for me to know. Well, to keep the list brief... I'd have to say clothing and jewelry that you've given me throughout a relationship and the engagement ring that I have. Also my laptop that has all my work information on it and all of my backup hard drives and such and also the pressed flower collection that I inherited from my grandpa before he passed away. What about that printer that I have? Do you think that's something that we could easily buy again? That's a good point. I think that we could easily buy that printer again if we ever need to. Well, in that case... I guess those are the only things that I would never want to lose under any circumstances. All right. Do you think you can manage to fit all those things into one large moving box or something similar to that? Right. All of those things that I mentioned before aren't very big or really that heavy anyway. So I could probably squeeze them all into one moderately sized box. Um, can you please tell me why you're asking me things like this? Sure. I was planning on telling you what will happen tomorrow morning over there for you, but, well, I'll let you know now. Next week, I'm planning on coming back to the States for a short while. Wait, really? Samson, does this mean that things are finally... That's right. It seems that things have progressed a lot faster than I'd anticipated here, so... 
Well, I'll be able to stay in the US for about 3 months or so this time. So I was thinking that during that time, you and I can sort all of this out. Understood. I'll do whatever I can here to start getting things ready for us. Alright. If you can assist me with that box, you'll pack up with all the things that you don't want to lose. That would be very helpful. Well then, do you think we can end the call here for now? It's the middle of the night for you, and I'm sure you're feeling sleepy, right? Well, I'm actually feeling a little sleepy. Then you need to go to sleep soon, because there are more things that I need you to do. I'll send you the list, and you can get started on them. Alright then, Samson. Maybe I'll send it in a few hours from now. Then I'll read it when I wake up, please. Well, good night, Scarlet. Good night, Samson. Hey, Scarlet. Today I want you to pack your bags and get out of this penthouse. Uh, what's that? Mom, Dad, my wife and I all had a little chat and we came to a decision. You've been trying way too hard to get your hands on Mom and Dad's money, haven't you? You're also in your 40s now and you still haven't gotten married. Instead, you're just dreaming about it and pretending that you have a fiancé that's not even real. Did you ever stop and think that maybe the reason why I might not be married yet is because I happen to have a useless family that is always mooching off of me? You have no right to say that about us when you're an old hag that can't seem to distinguish lies from reality. We're doing this to get you to wake up from that stupid dream that you have about some fiancé that you think you have. We're making you homeless. Do you understand? Excuse me? So you're telling me the four of you are going to kick me out of this penthouse that I've been living in? Well, when you put it like that, it makes the four of us look like the bad guys. I'm just trying to help my little sister get back to reality and face the facts. And that requires us to be a little tough on you. Well, I'm not even there anymore, okay? I wasn't able to relax or enjoy myself in that place while you and your wife were there. So, before I had to deal with any of you guys anymore, I made my move and left. Oh, really? All of the things that were in my room are no longer of any use to me. So go ahead and take whatever you'd like from there. That goes for the whole penthouse as well. Really? Well, I see. And just so you're still aware, I'm going to be taking over this penthouse now. So it was all going to be mine, whether you gave me permission or not. Well, please take good care of Mom and Dad for me. As if you did anything to care for them. All you were was a cruddy parasite to them that locked yourself away in their house. Goodbye forever. <laughs> Hey, Scarlet. A freaking lawyer is here at the door. He's been going on and on about whose place this penthouse is and whose name is on the ownership papers. What the hell is all this nonsense about? I'm sure that the lawyer has already explained that part to you in detail, right? My fiancé, the one who has his name on the penthouse making it legally his, is asking you when the three other squatters that are living there with you are going to get the heck out of his place right now. What are you talking about? This penthouse is mom and dad's place. They've been living here for a long time. I told you so many times already that it's not their place. It's my fiancé's place, you idiot. He bought it a few years ago, and he let me live here with him. But dad said... Both mom and dad had to end up stumbling into that place with me because the two of them are too stupid and hopeless to help themselves anymore. They lost their apartment and they had nowhere else to go. And after they started to force themselves to live with me long term, you started to think for no good reason that the place was mom and dad's and that you could come and visit anytime you pleased. Are you starting to realize how stupid that was of you and that there's no way out of this mess now? Huh? Why are you trying to blow so much smoke up my butt? You're lying to me, aren't you? Are you kidding me? I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. Dad was fired from his job almost a year ago. He was fired? He was at a party for work, 
and there was a new employee that he wasn't really fond of. And so he decided to pour beer all over them as a prank. And well, that new employee just so happened to be the CEO's son. The CEO's son? Yes, the CEO's son. Because of that, the company started to investigate Dad and found a full list of compliances that he'd been violating and causing the company. After seeing all that, they decided that Dad was too far gone to be retrained or helped in any manner, and they chose to fire him on the spot. What the heck? After being fired, he was far too old for any other companies to want to hire him, and that led him no longer being able to afford the rent for the apartment he and Mom were sharing. So... I went and asked my fiancé if it'd be okay for them to stay with me for a little while, and he said that was fine. He was very generous and understanding. Are you being serious right now? I really thought that by having that lawyer show up at the front door, you would have realized that it was not playing around with you at all, and neither is my fiancé. He's fed up with you and your wife and wants you out of his penthouse. Are you kidding me, though? I'm sure you've already heard this, but that penthouse is being set for sale, so you all need to go back to your apartment, or wherever you came from, right now. You can't stay here any longer. What? And this also means that you'll be taking Mom and Dad with you as well. You can't leave them here either. No, you hold it right there. I've had enough of this crap from you. Luckily for my wife and I, we haven't gotten rid of our apartment just yet, so we can make things work. But it's not big enough for mom and dad to be coming there with us. It's too small and crowded. Is that so? You've been in that penthouse for a month now, right? Have you not been the one taking care of mom and dad this whole time there? Have you not been the one feeding them, bathing them, and cleaning up after them? I want you to come back and take these two hags with you. They're your responsibility, not mine. That's not going to happen, though. Why the hell not? Because I'll be moving overseas with my fiancé soon. To a brand new world without any of you guys around. A world where I can be happy and free. What? You're moving overseas? He is still required to be overseas for work for some time now. So we've decided that the two of us are just going to buy a house there. And that'll be our new home where we can start a new life together. He was actually able to get me a visa as well, because he pulled some strings to make it look as though I'm already his wife, even though we haven't had our wedding yet. So the two of us will be going earlier than expected, and we're very excited about it. We've already finished up our packing and everything, and we're ready to leave this place behind. No way! You stop all of that nonsense right now and come back here. You can't just leave like that. I told you that's not happening. I'm not coming back here, ever. Bull crap. And do you really think you'll be able to live in a completely new country all by yourself? You're in your 40s now, and you've lived your whole life spoiled by mom and dad. You've never worked a day in your life, and you have no skills or qualifications. You really think you can speak another language that will allow you to live well in a foreign land? Good freaking luck with that. You know what? I'm a translator. That's what I do for a living. A translator? You're joking, right? I'm not joking. I only started doing it after being proposed to by my fiancé, but I've learned that I am really good at it. I can speak several languages fluently, and I can translate any text or speech with ease. Are you serious? You're kidding me. I'm serious. I've been with my fiancé for over five years now, by the way. Did you know that? What? No, I didn't know that. I told him that the reason I didn't want to marry him yet is because all my family was toxic and I didn't want him being dragged into all your guys' drama. But he was very accepting of that and told me he'd wait until I'm ready to be his wife. He's so loving and he has always been there to take care of me. He even let me stay in his penthouse this whole time while he's been overseas, working hard to provide for us. Wait a minute, Scarlet. And, well, seeing that he's even gone to lengths to get me to move to another country with him, I have an answer for him. Please, hold on a second. Once he and I are on the plane heading to our new house, 
I'm never coming back to the U.S. I'm going to marry him and be happy with him. I told you to freaking wait. Don't you dare do that. And with that, goodbye forever. I don't want to hear from you again. A few days after that fateful encounter with the lawyer, my older brother and his wife decided to end their marriage and get a divorce. I guess that his wife started to realize the risks of living with him, as her husband was getting way too high on drugs and alcohol and made her choice on the matter. She didn't want to be associated with him anymore. And as for that apartment that she'd been living in with my brother, it happened to be under her name only. She had paid for it with her own money. My brother and both my parents were kicked out of her place then and forced to become homeless for a few days as they marched over 20 miles to get to a family friend of theirs house. They had no other place to go. They were all allowed to reside there for a little while, and while doing so, it seems that my dad started to look for work online. He wanted to find a way to support himself and his family. I thought that luck was on their side this time, and that they would finally be able to get back on their feet. But that's when I found out the shocking truth. The three of them have loads of debt. And by the looks of it, those three are never going to be able to break free from this life of never having any money and should get acquainted with life as poor people. They had borrowed money from many sources and couldn't pay them back. As for myself, I received my visa and was able to leave the U.S. with my fiancé. He was so happy to finally have me for good this time and wanted me to know he'd never leave my side again. He had missed me so much. And when we touched down in a new country away from my family, he asked me if we could get married that month, and I said yes. I was ready to start a new life with him. He had already bought a house for us, and he had a stable job. He was everything I ever wanted.